really do have to address misinformation. So I'm going to pass it back over to Control F, and we're joined by Jessica Johnston, who is the Director of Digital Media Literacy Programming at Civics. Civics is one of the national civic education nonprofits in Canada, and she leads this program. So Jessica, can you tell us a little bit more about it? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And uh, thank you also to Athena for sharing your experience with the program. Really appreciated that. Um, I, I'm going to dig a fair bit into the rationale for the program uh, with this presentation, just because I think it's really important, um, as well as the nitty gritty. There are two kind of main ideas I want to share. The first is that students struggle to evaluate information online using the skills they've been taught in school. That second part is important. The, the skills that they've been taught really, you know, don't don't serve them in uh, in this new digital, digital world of ours. Um, the second is that there's a better way that we can empower students with digital literacy skills that really support informed citizenship. Um, there is a problem here, but the whole the lens is a very is very solution oriented. So I'll dig a bit more into that. But um, I do work for Civics, which is a, an organization that builds uh, civic education programming for teachers to use with their students. It's all participatory. Um, our flagship is Student Vote, which is a parallel election that runs alongside federal, provincial, and some municipal elections. And we're in nearly 80% of Canadian schools with that. This is all through building work with teachers, and it's how we kind of get our programming out there in general. Um, so in recent years, we've really uh, refined our work in, in media literacy because we know for democracy to work, people need to be informed and engaged. This is a real challenge when our information ecosystem is polluted with false and misleading information and context is often lacking. It's hard to know what to trust. Um, you know, we have this, picture, this big picture situation where, you know, everyone can be a publisher online, social media algorithms prioritize provocative content. There are people who seek to profit, whether it's financially or ideologically or both, from disturbing um, content, for dis from distributing a broad range of harmful and misleading information online. So if we have, you know, this problem number one is structural and challenging to change. Problem number two has to do with how individuals process all of this information, what we actually do with it. So here we come back to this idea that students struggle to evaluate information online. Now, this isn't surprising because we all struggle with this. This is kind of everyone's problem. It can be a really daunting challenge, but today we're talking about young people and our programming is for youth. So we're talking about uh, students. Um, some real foundational research by Stanford History Education Group and others has really showed that most students flounder when asked to evaluate unfamiliar, unfamiliar sources, stories, and claims. Um, my organization is in the midst of our own large scale study that looks at what students do when asked to assess online information. Um, I'm, I've got my head in the research now, so I, I'm you know, happy to talk about it a little bit, but we only have preliminary results. It's not final, but the picture that's emerging is pretty troubling. Um, for example, when asked to look at a website belonging to an advocacy group, only 6% of students were able to identify the presence of an agenda. So in this case, the group was the American College of Pediatricians. Um, now this was founded to advocate against the adoption of children by same-sex couples. It has been labeled by others as a hate group. Um, when asked to rate the trustworthiness of the American College of Pediatricians as a source of information about children's health, 90% of students formed their assessment by examining the site itself. Um, many indicated trust because the site is a .org instead of a .com. This one makes my head explode in particular. Anyone can buy a, can buy a .org people. That's not, doesn't make it more trustworthy. Um, other commonly cited features include the absence of ads, the professional appearance of the site, as well as the quality and the quantity of the information available. So we call these set of strategies of vertical reading. The common element is that students stay on the page and analyze the content itself. So in school, this type of strategy is often packaged as a checklist that students apply to evaluate credibility. The crap test is a common one. Um, the problem is that these strategies don't provide meaningful information and very often they backfire. So when it comes to uh, evaluating online information, we need to do something that's different. In contrast to vertical reading, um, lateral, lateral reading asks students to leave the page where the information is, open a new tab, and conduct some simple research. This is what professional fact checkers do because it's effective and efficient. Uh, these are the skills at the heart of Control F, the verification tools. Um, Control F itself is the keyboard shortcut for find. And like that shortcut, lateral reading helps us find the information we need quickly. So when we read laterally, we can gain key context quickly about a source or claim before we engage critically and give it our time and attention. Um, you know, if it's not something we want to engage with, we can find that out very quickly and just move on to the next thing and find a better source. So key, key questions in Control F will include what are other sources saying? Has the claim been verified or disproven by a fact-checking group or professional news source? What is the reputation of the source that produced or shared this? So the Wikipedia entry for American College of Pediatricians clearly states the group's goals. With a 30 second check, you can determine what 15 minutes of close reading won't tell you. And this is just so, so important to do. Um, so the Control F program itself is for teachers um, to use with students and it packages up these, these lateral reading strategies into a series of lesson plans, 
anchored by expert videos and interactive source evaluation assignments using real current examples drawn from both reliable and unreliable sources. So um, over the course of our research, we have had more than 3000 students go through the program um, since it launched in September. And the feedback has been really overwhelmingly positive from teachers. You know, we hear a lot about how needed these tools are and how digital media literacy is a fundamental life skill that applies kind of across curriculum. Um, so through our research study, we are also seeing some quantifiable uh, results from the program um, on post-test close to half, 45% of the Control F students successfully identified the agenda of an advocacy group. Um, this time it was a climate change denial organization. And again, this is in comparison to just 6% on the pretest. So there's clearly a lot of work to be done. We can all get better at this, um, but you know, we're really excited by the potential of lateral reading as a new standard approach to digital media literacy education and Control F as a way to support informed citizenship in the classroom. Registration is free, it's available to all teachers, the materials are in French and English, and everything's available at newsliteracy.ca. You can share the, the other information, you know. After. Yeah, we'll definitely share uh, the website. Uh, when Adele uh, shared it with me, it, it blew my mind. It's a fantastic website. The curriculum is all there, it's easily accessible. Uh, so it's, it's great. And now to 